Welcome to Rise Above Performance Trains, 15 Minutes of Strength, the show where we explore and discuss the vast landscape of strength to help all of us live our best and strongest lives. I'm your host, Doug Fiorinelli, and this is Who, Why, What? I'm going to do something in this premiere episode I do not normally like to do, which is talk about myself and make this all about me. In this episode, I'm going to go over who I am, why I'm jumping on the podcast bandwagon, and what to expect of this podcast going forward. The who. Well, I am Doug Fiorinelli, and I'm the owner of Rise Above Performance Training, which I established back in 2008 here in Belmont, California. I work daily with athletes, first responders, and what I call willing adults. Back in the 80s and 90s, I was very fortunate to be a multi-sport athlete. A lot of kids were during those days. We were exposed to different things to see what we were good at and what we gravitated to. Played a lot of soccer, tried basketball, realized I was not going to grow very tall. So that was not my sport. Played some baseball and, uh, you know, that had its ups and downs and uh, got exposed to swimming, water polo and many other sports. So I was very fortunate to get exposed to a lot of things where eventually I gravitated towards soccer. So through my love of soccer, it also brought a lot of highs, but some lows, especially where the injuries were concerned. When I was about 15 years old, we uh, went to Germany to play, you know, summer tournaments, things like that with the all-star team. And uh, I did a mistimed challenge and uh, ran into a brick wall and torqued my knee. Very painful experience. Didn't really know what was going on. You know, today you would have been quick to assess that, hey, he blew out his ACL, which is what I did. So I hobbled along for about half the summer, not able to play. So I was a little bit uh, discouraged by that and came home and realized, you know, high school season was going to start. My knee was feeling better, but I needed to do something else. Uh, Surgery wasn't really on the table as it is now. You know, a lot of people would just go straight to surgery because they know better. But they were like, let's uh, go to physical therapy. Honestly, I didn't really know what physical therapy was. Um, I had an idea. So they sent me to Health South, run by Stan Conte, who was the Giants athletic trainer and physical therapist um, a few years later. And then I think he went to the Dodgers. So I was in great hands. And it was there that I learned my love for training and preparation and doing all these things to make you stronger, not only to come back from injuries, but also to prevent them. So that's planted the seed down the road, which I was going to take academically and both also like in a career profession. So after I graduated high school, I um, went to my undergraduate and I started out in kinesiology with an emphasis in physical therapy. So the emphasis was just the classes you ne- needed to take to get into pre-physical therapy school. So with my experience of going to Health South with Stan Conte and also having my cousin be a physical therapist, I'm like, this is for me. I want to be a physical therapist. So I did my undergrad. And then I decided to do an internship, which was recommended um, before you go to graduate school to get some experience. And I really liked my internship. I went to Baseboard Physical Therapy, which is attached to Pacific Athletic Club in Redwood Shores. And I did about a year there as a physical therapy aide where I, you know, did simple things like putting ice packs and heat pads and setting people up on stim and ultrasound to a little bit more advanced stuff where I was helping people go through exercises and creating programs for them. And I really learned a lot. So I applied for physical therapy graduate school after that. And I got in really excited, got into Cal State Long Beach and I had all these expectations. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this for two, two and a half years, knock this out and be an awesome physical therapist. Who knows? Maybe I'll work for my cousin or open up my own place. Well, as we know, sometimes in life, my expectations were a little bit different than real life. I had the idea that I've done a lot of studying academically and now we were just going to go in and put our hands on people and move some knees around and crank on shoulders and do these all, all these other things. Not the case. At that school, it was heavy academic, a lot more physiology, exercise physiology, anatomy, even neuroanatomy, a ton of neuroanatomy. I didn't really take neuroanatomy. I just got exposed to an undergrad. And wow, when I went to uh, graduate school, that was tough. There was a cycle where they would pretty much 
study hard for one week in one subject, then move to the next one because he had a test in that next one, then a test in the other one. So it went on this like four week cycle of alternating exams for every class. And that was not the best for me. I got a little bit behind, was studying a lot and just kind of spinning my gears and uh, just digging myself into a huge hole. After many sleepless nights and about a year of trying to progress and move forward, I kind of had to make a hard decision and dropped out of school physical therapy. Now, this wasn't without thought. It wasn't because I was doing poorly, solely because I was doing poorly that I did that. It was also it was kind of hearkening back to the internship days where I was helping people build programs when they were leaving. Oftentimes they'd be like, you know, so-and-so's done with their physical therapy. Can you take them outside in the gym and put them on a program so they can continue to do the work on their own so they can stay strong? And I really realized that I liked this aspect of it. So I came home and uh, decided that my academic career was not done. I still had a lot to learn. So I applied for graduate program in uh, kinesiology in a local college here, San Francisco State, when it, with an emphasis in exercise science or exercise physiology. And the fortunate thing was I was able to do that at night. So when I did that at night, I started learning about training and taking um, certification classes for training. So in 2001, I was able to get a job as a trainer at the gym where the physical therapy internship was. I was very fortunate to do so because this facility required that you had two years of training experience before you are allowed to train there. I did not have that, of course, but I had that uh, schooling and also the uh, physical therapy background. And I probably had a few people vouch for me at the time as well. And I was able to train there with uh, out real experience. I um, was put on a probation period, shadow trainers for about a a month or so. And uh, they let me out on my own. I remember getting my second client on September 12, 2001, the day after that day of infamy in our country's history. So I always kind of remember that day. And then after that, it, it took off from there. So as I was training and going to graduate school, I uh, was getting wrapping that up towards the end. And, uh, you know, I was also accumulating equipment off of Craigslist and where I could get it and throwing it in my garage. My roommate and I accumulated this equipment and made like a, had, got like a rack and some old weights. And, you know, all we needed was a bench press and a curl bar. So we can uh, do that before we went out at night. But I started to accumulate that equipment and I just started, you know, training people out of there as well. So I had the gym, the training I uh, wouldn't call it a business, but the uh, fledgling business outside of my garage and also graduate school. So I eventually finished graduate school and uh, got my thesis published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. If you want to read that, it'll be in the show notes. Kind of happy about that. That was a lot of work. When I was doing that, uh, I kind of realized that I enjoyed training at the the gym I was at. But, you know, there is a ceiling. You're going to work with a certain amount of people. It's great. The people there were really good. They, um, you know, had money. They were willing to work, but there is a ceiling in terms of how far you can kind of take that type of training because you were working with a certain type of clientele. I went back to my sporting days and I was like, you know, I really enjoyed working with people to get them stronger so they could prevent injuries like I had and um, also recover from injuries. So I wanted to do that. I realized that Strength and conditioning was getting a little bit more popular, but like me, I didn't really have those um, options. It was there for football and uh, things like that, but we didn't really do much. I don't even remember doing any strength and conditioning for soccer. I remember doing for water polo, we did some dry land work, they called it, but it was mostly, hey, run around the track twice, throw some medicine balls around with people. Okay, the weight room's open for 20 minutes. Of course, every kid ran to the bench press, you know, and we didn't know what we were doing. So it wasn't, you know, the best uh, structured training, I should say. So I wanted to find a way to bring structure and to help kids out and help them prevent injuries and take their sports as uh, far as they could. So I took a year out of, after graduate school to study business to learn how to run a business, you know, with hopes of opening my own facility. The bad thing about being in the hard sciences, you learn zero about business in most schools. I don't know if it's changed now, but there is pretty much no crossover. The general ed stuff is history and math. Um, I forgot what else, but you know they don't they don't give you even a basic business class. 
So I had to learn that on my own. I did that for about a year while working still at the gym. And then I came across an opportunity in 2008 where a guy was wanted to get out of his lease and he had a little garage gym in Belmont. You know, I went down there to look at it. I actually purchased a little bit of equipment out of it and took the lease off of him and started my own spot and started working in the afternoons and nights there while I was still working at the other place. And it was fun. I was getting a small group of people would come over from the other gym and also I'd get some athletes and that's how it all started back in July of 2008. Rise Above Performance Training was born. Though the why for this podcast So along with running the gym since 2008 and training people daily like I still do now, I also like to create content. And and the content I create, I try to make it simple. I want to get it out to people in a simple manner and where they can take and use right away. So I've written numerous blog posts since 2009 on my own website. Check it out, riseabovestrength.com. Also a bunch of videos, mostly on YouTube. So Rise Above Performance Training, if you want to look on YouTube there, have a bunch of how-to videos as well as workouts and things. And I've done several guest con- contributions uh, to places like On It and Dragon Door, et cetera. So I wanted to find a new way to get things out there. And podcasting serves two purposes. One, there, it is a new way to get things out there. I've never done it before. And also this is a way for me to learn how to do this over a new medium. I still feel like I'm a perpetual student and I'm always looking for ways to educate myself and grow along with my audience. So podcasting is a new way for me to challenge myself and how to share knowledge and insight over this new medium. So I'm learning this equipment, how to record, how to edit and how to get it out to you. So hopefully you can learn the content and how to integrate it with your own lives. So this is all about learning. So what is this podcast going to be about going forward? I want this to be about learning and applying strength. Strength can come from anywhere. It could be physical. It could be mental. It could be inspirational. I plan on talking about my own experiences from time to time, but also I am plan on getting guests. I want to draw from their experience of strength because we all have you know, different lives, different uh, areas of work and different experiences that we can draw on to make ourselves stronger and have things resonate with you guys to become stronger. And I want to do this in a short and quick fo- format. I don't intend on being, you know, a full-time podcaster or, you know, even a famous podcaster. So I feel these 15 minute chunks are going to be the way to do it. We're going to get right to the content, get it out there, make it simple. That way you can take it and apply it to your day that day. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this information relevant to your life and you're going to be willing to Kind of join me on this journey as I learn how to do this podcast and get information about strength out there. You want to join me and go with me. So please consider subscribing to the podcast as well as, uh, you know, I'm going to put this podcast on YouTube as well. So all the platforms, you can check out the show notes, um, check out the Rise of Strength website, I have a newsletter there. I put, uh, you know, monthly uh, articles and videos up. So again, I'm just going to really try to get that information out to you guys and uh, try to help each other out. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, remember, all the strength you need is created on the inside and reinforced from the outside. Take care, everyone.